Before we get started with the meat of the video, I made a new friend. <laughs> so, as I've said before, the reason that I make these YouTube vids is, well, one, because I need to do something, <laughs> and the other one is, this is like my social network. So here I am, jaying out of my ME262. I was the last person left on my team, and there were a couple of enemy props still hanging around and they'd been contributing and trying hard and so I could draw out the battle and make it last about 25-30 minutes and go for ground targets and maybe squeeze a victory out of it or I could just take off and give them the win. They earned it today. So the topic for discussion today, discussion, well that's a new thing for me. Yeah, um, don't get your hopes up. <laughs> but when I was a kid, my dad was in the army and we moved a lot and every place we went of course was on or near a military base because dad was in the army. And so I fell in love early with like tanks and fighting vehicles and I even thought that the, uh, the, oh what was it called? Oh, anyway, forget it. Topic for another day. But uh, infantry fighting vehicles, those are a cool thing that uh, you don't see many of them in the game yet. The, uh, the Soviets have one, the BMP. So hopefully there will be more IFVs coming to the game because they bring something to the meta of War Thunder that is different. And as you know, if you know me, I like things that are different. So, what was I saying? I love fighting vehicles and tanks and the first time I laid eyes on the A-10, I always knew it then as the Warthog, but apparently its official name is the Thunderbolt, named after the famous Jug, right? And as soon as I laid eyes on the Warthog, I thought, wow, this is a tank of the skies. It's ugly, it's rugged, it's powerful, it's heavy. It's got that huge cannon on the front that leaves you no doubt about what, about uh, what is where at and how to bring the business. <laughs> yeah, hold on a second guys, I got some baby aggro here. Let me, let me give Tank Baby what she needs. All right, she's got a bottle. We'll see how long that pacifies the beast. She's been eating a lot today. So, fast forward to when I was, oh geez, what was that, like maybe 12, 13-ish? Dad's not around anymore, but we used to love going to Grandma's house. And that's my dad's mom. She is just like, you know that like typical grandma that always has something coming out of the oven, like cookies or a pie? whenever you're there and you can never leave without being like totally full and having money in your pocket yeah she's that grandma and uh, she had an N64 and my favorite game to play against my brothers was Aero Fighters Assault 2 because I always kick their butts <laughs> and that was the first game I ever played that had the A-10 in it and it was really cool it really featured the the qualities of the A-10 well in my opinion uh, it was a durable airplane there's several planes you could choose from the A-10 was the most durable it was slower speed than those jet fighters but it had a cannon they could shoot for days. Like literally, uh, all the other guns were like pew 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 and then you had like a, a reload time or whatever, some downtime after shooting your shots. But the A-10 could just spray indefinitely and it was glorious. <laughs> I would play whole whole matches where I just never stopped shooting the gun because DACA, that's why. And, <laughs> and uh, anyway, that game was not realistic but it still managed to capture the the spirit of that of that ugly bird that powerful beast of the sky and uh, so 
Needless to say, I've been looking forward to the A10 being introduced to any game that I play. I, I don't even care what it is. Mario Party? Give me a Warthog, right? You just give me a new skin for Bowser. A10 Warthog skin. Uh, <laughs> but seriously, uh, where do I stand on the A10 being added to the game? I would gladly watch the entire game burn to the ground if it means that they're going to add the A10. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would watch Matchmaker commit seppuku. I would wait 15 minutes to get into a match to play the A10 just because it's my childhood dream. I mean, this would be the first time I've ever really had a chance to fly the Warthog. Not, not to fly some some neat cartoonish knockoff of the principle of the warthog but to fly something that really feels like an a10 thunderbolt so that's where i stand <laughs> i'm very excited about the prospect of it being added and i never expected the warthog to be added to the game you know when i started playing war thunder that was so far off from where things are and from where i was with progression in the game that it didn't even cross my mind, but I thought, you know what would be really cool one day is if they add the Warthog. And the other thing that I'm looking for in the game is the, of course, the Abrams tank, because I'm an American, and the, the pinnacle of American tank design, the Abrams. So, that's where I stand on that. And I guess I could take a minute to talk about the gameplay we have going on in the background. Why the ME262A1U4 Narwhal? Well, this is a jet fighter, and in the game it performs, as I've mentioned before, one of the few ground attackers that can actually perform in the sense that you can win matches with this thing strictly by destroying ground targets and there's few aircraft that can say the same and this is probably the only one that can also maintain enough of a defensive advantage to protect itself in a match and that's uh, generally only in a down tier but it is possible once you start facing uh, F-84s, things get a little more dicey. But um, the gun probably has similar penetration qualities to the 30 millimeter on the Warthog, but of course a much lower fire rate. So can you imagine shredding tanks to pieces with that thing? in tank RB and air RB and you know even if they put the Warthog at like a 10.0 battle rating and introduce uh, surface to air missile defense vehicles into the game that render it practically useless in tank RB I would still love to fly the thing in air RB and uh, it might not be able to outfly enemy planes at its battle rating, but can you imagine just lining up on an enemy aircraft and pressing the shred button <laughs> and watching every module on that airframe get torn to pieces and then the thing blows up. I like that video where I was in the P-47 and I took out the plane and then just for fun I shredded it to pieces with my 850 50 cals. Can you imagine that 30 millimeter cannon? High fire rate. And then of course that begs the question what's coming next after these high rank attackers which by the way attackers are my favorite aircraft in the game and what I'd also love to see is take the ME262 a1U4 Narwhal and anything that's similar to it and make a jet attacker category you know for too long now jets have been jets you have jet bombers or jet fighters and there's only two categories I guess you could say there's naval jet aircraft but you get the idea the other aircraft in the game 
are separated out into attackers, bombers, interceptors, and the narwhal would probably get classed as an interceptor, but like I said, it's best as an attacker. That might not be the historical role, but that's definitely the role that it can fill in the game. So I'd love to see the narwhal uh, classified as a jet attacker. The first true jet attacker, I feel like it's earned the title. Um, the, technically this is supposed to be a bomber, right? <laughs> that was that was drafted into the role of interceptor and given a big old gun. But in the game, jet attacker, come on, new category. How do you guys feel about classifying jets as interceptor, attacker, um, of course we still have jet bombers, jet fighters, the same way that props have been classified. There's enough now in the game that I feel like that's possible and when they add higher rank jet aircraft uh, making a category such as jet attacker for say the A-10 Warthog giving it a higher spawn point cost in tank RB that all seems reasonable to me. What else can we talk about? Of course the durability of the Warthog is legendary. Um, I don't imagine that the flight characteristics are going to be overpowered. There's probably even current rank 9.0 aircraft that can outfly the thing. But secondary armament, my goodness, we're looking at rockets, missiles, guided missiles, um, Let's see, what else? The guided missiles where you have ones that lock onto heat signatures, which would be a new feature in the game. Ones that lock onto radar returns, which would be a new feature in the game. You have guided bombs, laser guided bombs, guys. Can you imagine lining up your gun sight, dropping your bombs from 2,000 meters, and just keeping your sight on target and watching the bombs go exactly to where you aimed. That would be kind of cool. Uh, and how would you balance that? Maybe maybe they don't need to be balanced at say a, a 9 point or a 10.0 battle rating. After all it would only face top tier tanks. MBTs thinks they're very capable of moving rapidly if they get uh, intercepted by your bombs. Well they're only flying a little bit faster than an MPT or an MBT-70 anyway, <laughs> so maybe that's a thing. What else can be said? Let's think. Where would the AT or where would the A-10 show up in the tech tree? Well, of course, it would be after the AD-4 in the French tree. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> after the American AD-4, most likely, and. There was talk of an equivalent Soviet vehicle being added to the game, and was it the Frogfoot? Anyway, I, I'm not, I'm not really familiar with. Oh my gosh! Actually, wait. No, the Frogfoot's super cool. Anyway, that would be a neat thing to see in the game as well. And what else? So it would be exciting to have more jets in the game. With the addition of jet attackers, I feel like that can really mix up the meta of top tier jets because currently there's only fighters and as much as people, especially um, people whose goal is just to win matches, as much as they complain about people flying anything other than fighters, you know, because it's fighters that win battles, well, the narwhal can win a battle by ground striking. And I would personally like to see more ground strike meta being brought into Air RB. And I'm talking about making it easier to win matches by ground striking. Maybe. And look at that. <laughs> we got a fair trade on that one. No regrets. Maybe make a special game mode in Air RB. Just because right now all you have with Air RB is team deathmatch and really there's other objectives but they don't add up to victory 
usually you have to wipe out a ridiculous number of ground targets or drop a ludicrous amount of bombs to win a match and that's specifically set in place to avoid those win conditions from being accomplished by the most outstanding vehicles on the enemy team like the Heinkel 219 for ground strike or the narwhal or the uh, BV 238 for bombing or that French 22222 thing uh, or half of the uh, Soviet bombers <laughs> they're super heavy bombers PE8, TU4 and such so the game is specifically designed to prevent those wins from happening because people who are looking for a dogfight, people who are looking for intense fighter action, they don't come to these matches to watch somebody win with ground strike or to watch somebody win by bombing the bases in the first seven minutes of the match. But what if you could queue up for Air RB ground strike so you can use your bombers you can use your ground attackers you can use whatever you want but there's an enemy convoy and if you take it out you win and there's an allied convoy and if they take it out they win so the focus is no longer on wiping out all of the enemy aircraft it's attack and defend to support ground troops and how would you keep fighters from turning that into their playground? Well, that's probably a question for another time, but I'd like to see it worked on. We haven't even... we sort of... I mean there was a a tanks versus planes special event that was really fun by the way, um, but flawed. There was definitely some issues with how that was introduced and that was probably a test of some sort to see how people would respond but air rb has nothing you know in in tank rb and arcade there's break there's battle there's domination and there's a few different kinds of domination but it's always the same thing with air rb and with the introduction, and here's the segue into the main topic, with the introduction of top tier attackers, that could be a chance. Are we going to see Air RB 2.0 this year? Are we going to see new life breathed into jet combat? Because I think the issue with jet combat is nobody wants to play top tier jets because the only people who are still around in that meta are fighter jockeys. People who all they do is learn to feast on the tears of anyone who doesn't know how to squeeze the most performance out of their aircraft as possible. Uh, people who don't know how to engage in these close range gunfights and with guided missiles and top tier attackers. Could that be the change that Air RB needs? And of course, I'm talking also about adding more variety to the game modes to where you're not always queuing up into a team deathmatch, but there's a there's a chance for you to say you get a certain map, you get a certain game mode and you're like, "Oh, this one focuses on the attackers." So you know right away that you're going to cover your jet attackers. Or another one, oh this one, this map definitely, it's way easier to win by bombing. You know, maybe there's only two bomb points. One you defend and one you attack, say an oil refinery. And when they take out all of the, all of the factory and all of the, the petroleum storage, then their team gets victory. And if you can defend your stuff, then you win. Uh, or, you know, while well, at the same time, if you take out theirs before they take out yours, victory is achieved. Yeah, that's something. Defending a specific target, that could breathe new life into Air RB. You don't just go into the map and, and you know, fly toward 
the bomb here marker but there's a zone where your target is a red area on the map and you go there and you're trying to take out you know five specific factory buildings you know bomb the mouse tank before it gets produced <laughs> fun stuff like that right where each map you're like oh it's advanced Orion so you know we're bombing these targets oh it's El Alamein so we're bombing you know these tents over here or something like that even like just taking this this cut and paste it's all the same sort of th this is something the way that ground targets bases and tanks and ground units are set up on the maps it's very it's like it's good for a beginning effort like okay we got the map out we just made this game here's some things we just cut and paste these resources and we use the same thing for every map okay that's that's fine but look and honestly here's one look at what world of warplanes has done where you have unique ground features unique bases on each map that you're trying to take out and I mean World of Warplanes is not the game that I play but that's a that's a good call that's a good decision because even if you don't like the map well it's something different every time and speaking of something different every time bedtime <laughs> my baby girl tank baby hates to go to sleep nap time bedtime usually a huge struggle and then you know I just went in there and rocked her for a minute and she was out she was tired she just didn't want to be forced to go to sleep <laughs> it's, it's, it's unfair <laughs> supposed to be able to stay up all night like daddy does no guppy no you don't want to do that <laughs> so where were we you know when I'm talking about things that will breathe new life into the game and things that I feel would be improvements I want to make it very clear that I love this game and I love what the developers have done with the game over the past few years I love the dedication that they've shown to continually adding new content and pushing the boundaries of the engine and filling out the dreams of the community and even if my favorite vehicles never get added to the game even if the the game modes are not continually updated and and really I feel like there's an opportunity to breathe new life into air forces specifically because the basic setup of the game has not changed matches have not really changed between biplanes and top tier jets from the beginning of the introduction of the game to today there's very little about how matches actually play out that has really changed so I feel like there's room for that to grow but I want to be really clear I love this game I love what the developers have done this is their game it's not mine I play because I enjoy it and in no way would I want to you know to even feel like I'm the one in control of where the game goes in the future and that's a silly thing to think you know all all 30 people that watch this video are gonna put pressure on the company but but no um, when you start feeling like it's your game you know because you've put so much time into playing it you're sort of deluding yourself this game belongs to Gaijin and we we're playing with their ball because well they got a great ball court here and they let us play and they'll even let you play for free <laughs> that's pretty cool uh, I've put a decent amount or if you ask my wife an indecent amount of money into this game and I am very happy with what I've received in return for that but this is Gaijin's game, this is their ball, they've done great things with it and honestly I feel like 
there should be more games like this, but there aren't yet. And you know what? If another game like this comes out, it's not going to come from the AAA publishers. It's not going to come from some huge, big hype, gravy train American uh, game development campaign because, well, the American game industry is being led by small teams, by people that are passionate about what they're working on. And even outside of the country where I live, you're seeing the same thing. It's passion that drives people to real excellence when it comes to making games. Now what does this have to do with the introduction of, and this is still speculation, but it's, it's, it's very serious speculation at this point. What does this have to do with the introduction of the A-10 Warthog? Well, it's going to take passion. It's going to take dedication to make it work. But can you imagine the fruits of that? labor. Now, uh, the the Russian side of the community might be more interested in the Frogfoot, but I mean, there's got to be some Warthog fans in the uh, Eastern Bloc. It's just such a, it's just such a rugged, um, multi-role uh, beast of a Warframe, if you will, to mention another game that I'm sinking my time and not yet my money into. Um, but, where was I? I'm getting kind of lost here. <laughs> Do I seem a little bit confused and sidetracked in my videos? It's because I have the dad brain. It's a mix of lack of sleep and always having to check on a baby. Even after she's gone, the dad brain remains. Um, so, what will be the fruit of this new chapter in the life of War Thunder. We look back at 2017 and honestly I'm amazed at where the game has come since then. Um, tank game modes have seen a lot of, of experimentation. Experimenting with things like uh, free-for-all, the what's it called, like a PUBG style survival mode where you have the closing circle and it's winner takes all. We've seen the airplanes versus tanks game mode event. Of course these are all events that were tried out but these are things that we could be turned into a serious game mode if they catch on. Uh, we've seen capture the flag which is interesting but I think you need something a little more, like instead of a flag, let's make it secret documents, you know, or the last, the last barrel of petroleum for 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 the uh, for the Germans in World War II, something like that, something a little more meaningful than a than a guide on. What else have we seen this year? Of course, we've seen the introduction of lots and lots of vehicles that have shaken up the meta of War Thunder, but honestly, uh, give me the A-10 and then I'll be happy, and give me the Abrams and I'll be ecstatic, but give me, give me a little more variety in the game modes. We've seen some maps that have been absolutely fantastic, some maps that uh, have split the community, uh, usually the big ones where people are like, you know, I don't want to drive for, you know, three and a half whole minutes before I get into battle. Uh, meanwhile, in RRB, <laughs> here I am, used to climbing for seven minutes or so before I even encounter an enemy. But perhaps a little bit different community, but I've dipped my toes into every community and I find my home in Tank RB and Air RB most often, but I still play a lot of arcade, especially when I'm grinding. A little bit of sim, but really not as much as I used to. And what I've found is that it's a very fun game. Flying different vehicles can really make it feel like it's a new game mode. And within the match, you know, here you see, you can win a match by getting ground kills. Even today, what'll happen when you have top tier jets? 
that have to worry about not just air cover, but also what if those ground striking A-10s, what if those ground striking frogfoots win the match before we can finish up wiping out all of the air defense. Interesting stuff. Ooh, also, Wild Weasel. What if there are anti-aircraft uh, SAM batteries that engage at certain elevations? And if you fly low and take those down, you can help out the air guys. Anyway, that's it for today. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.